Hello, and welcome to another lesson on acoustic treatment this time. So today we're going to be talking about what is a reflection-free zone, also known in the acoustic world as the RFZ. So the reflection-free zone is going to be all about acoustic treatment and getting a great mix position. And if you're interested in improving the sound of your room, this is probably one of the best techniques you can do to get an awesome, clear stereo image. So if you're interested, stay tuned and follow along. Before I jump in, I want to let you know that I do have a free resource for you. If you are trying to acoustically treat your own room, I have a free acoustic treatment guide. You can download it below at the link, and this will give you a PDF document of exactly how to acoustically treat your room for you know anywhere from a couple hundred bucks to a couple thousand dollars, depending on if you want to build your own panels, and it'll get you started. It's how I started my home studio, and trust me, it works really great when you're building your studio out. All right, let's jump into this lesson on what is a reflection-free zone. All right, so this is a term that's used for home studio design, and it's also used in control rooms in commercial studios. The idea is that with a control room, we want to hear the sound of the speakers. We don't want to hear the sound of the room. So there's this design that was created to try to absorb all of the sound reflections off your sidewalls and your ceiling so that you hear the sound that's coming directly from your speakers, not the sound as it's bouncing around in your room. So the concept is fairly simple and the way to set it up is also not too hard. You can see in this picture here that I have a reflection free zone in my own studio. I've got the two panels on both side walls and then I have an eight foot by four foot cloud hanging from my ceiling to reduce the reflections from the floor to ceiling and from the speakers bouncing off the ceiling and then coming down to my ears. So the next step is how do we actually set up our reflection free zone or RFC? So the first step is that you want to have your listening position dialed in. And that's something I'll talk about in another video in the future. But once you have your listening position set where you like it, you've got your speakers set up, then you are ready to create your reflection free zone. In order to do this, you're going to need a friend and a mirror. I prefer to use those mirrors that are flat wall hanging mirrors that you use to get in, dressed in front of. Uh, you can get some cheap ones over at Target or any sort of uh, home store in your country. And what you're going to do is have a friend, like you can see in this video, hold a mirror up to the wall all the way in the corner of the front wall behind your speakers. You're going to sit at your listening position facing your speakers and you're going to have your friend slowly move the mirror along the wall towards the back wall and then you're going to look at that mirror and as soon as you see the front of the speaker you're going to tell your friend to stop take a pencil and mark the edge of the mirror closest to the speakers on the wall then you're going to have that friend continue with that mirror and slide it across the wall until you no longer see the front of the speaker in that mirror and this could be you could see the other speaker depending on how your room is set up but if you see the front of any speaker that is going to be part of the reflection zone the reason is that the mirror trick works just like sound waves bouncing off the wall so light also hits the mirror and reflects back to you and sound waves would do the exact same thing coming right to your ears so this helps us find the exact placement of our acoustic treatment to absorb that sound so it does not bounce back and hit our ears so once you find the end of the point where you can't see the speaker in your wall anymore, you can mark the edge of the mirror again, and that will create an area where you're going to hang your acoustic treatment. You're going to do the same thing for the opposite wall and mark the two points where you're going to have acoustic treatment in the middle of them. The next step is going to be actually hanging your panels. You can build your own panels or you can buy panels. I really like a company called Music City Acoustics here in Nashville. Graham is someone who I know personally and he's a super awesome dude, knows what he's talking about. You can also use GIK Acoustics based in Atlanta. Both of them ship throughout the entire country and I think uh, GIK Acoustics ships throughout the entire world. 
So those are recommendations for getting some acoustic panels. They can just be broadband acoustic panels. Um, if you're in a smaller room, you can actually get what are called base trap panels, which just mean that they usually have four inches of fiberglass instead of two, and that will help attenuate some of the low end in your room. You can also build your own panels. I actually have a video that I'll link in the description below of how I built my own panels. Um, they're lightweight, they're great looking, and they're really not too hard to build. So if you wanna build your own panels, you can check that out as well. So once we have our panels, we're gonna hang them on the walls. I like to use monkey hooks, and I just kinda of push a monkey hook through the drywall, it creates a tiny little hole, and then I have a piece of picture framing wire that I hang on the back of my panel where there's an airspace behind it, and I actually just hang the panel directly on the monkey hook, and it's super easy and awesome. But you can hang the panels however you want. The most important thing is just making sure that you have a little bit of an airspace from the insulation in your panel to the wall, Three inches is ideal, but any amount of airspace will help increase the amount of absorption you're gonna get from your panel. The next little tip I'll have is when you're hanging those panels between that area, you wanna make sure that the middle of the panels falls at your ear height. So this way you know that enough of the wall space is absorbing sound around where your ear height would be. We don't need to worry too much about the high part of the wall or the low part of the wall because we won't be putting our ears on the floor or the ceiling. Now, once you have your side panels up, you're gonna need to hang an acoustic cloud. In my studio, my cloud is really big because the room is a lot bigger than the average home studio. Depending on the size of your studio, you can make your cloud as small or as big as you want. Ideally, it will cover uh, the spot directly above your head. And if you can, you can get some width on either side. I found that having a larger acoustic cloud really helps when I'm recording guitar, vocals, things like that, by reducing the reflections from the floor to ceiling. And so the biggest acoustic cloud you can afford and are able to hang is what I would recommend. Again, making sure that it's between you and the speakers. You can have it a little bit in front of you. It's kind of nice if it goes over your head as well. So again, this is not to spec per se, but just getting as much of an acoustic cloud over top of your head and a little bit in front of you is gonna be the best option. A little extra tip here, um, the lower you can hang your cloud, the more bass attenuation you will get. So in the lower frequencies, um, with velocity traps, which is what we're creating, one quarter of the wavelength of the frequency will be absorbed based on the distance of your trap. So the lower you go, you can get those lower and lower frequencies. It's really hard to get below 100 hertz, but you're still gonna help with everything above 100 hertz by hanging your ceiling cloud lower. So keep that in mind, you know, obviously you can't hang it so low that it looks terrible or it's like right above your head, but getting a little bit more space will always help with absorption with velocity traps. All right, so in conclusion, creating the reflection free zone or RFZ is a great way to create an ideal environment for listening back during your recording sessions and also listening back when you're mixing and mastering. I highly recommend this technique and it's really a great option for home studios and commercial studios alike. All right, if you've enjoyed this video and you wanna go deeper into acoustic treatment, check out my free acoustic treatment guide at soundproofyourstudio.com slash acoustic. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash acoustic. Again, the link is in the description below. All right, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you next week with some more interesting advice on soundproofing and acoustic treatment for your home studio.